give me your opinion? No. Hey, will you look at this YouTube and give me your opinion? No, because that is passing the responsibility of people to walk with the Lord who claim to be Christians and to hear from the Lord. That's why I won't do it. I already am up 18 hours a day. I just don't have time. I just, will you take me under your wings and, um, what is it called? Disciple me? No, that's not what God's called me to do. And here's something too, Doug, you and I both have to deal with. As a matter of fact, everybody does. Someone else's panic and uh, urgency is not my responsibility. I, I say it this way, Steve. Failure to plan on your part does not constitute an emergency on mine. Simple That's, as that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's what I was trying to remember. So I want people to understand what's going to happen to metals. I said it. I have reiterated it. If silver went to zero tomorrow, spot price. If gold went to zero tomorrow, the going rate for silver right now, roughly 38 bucks an ounce, gold roughly 2,000 bucks or 2,100 bucks an ounce. But here's the deal. What's something worth when you can't get it? Is that an artificial price construct? Yes. Is there any true market discovery? No. <coughs> Excuse me, Doug. Everyone, if this represents, you know, 10 ounces of gold, and this 10 ounces of gold is held within this eyeglass case. And yesterday it was 2,000. So yesterday was a Wednesday. Today it's 4,000. And tomorrow's Friday, it's 6,000. You, if you want an ounce of gold, want to take as much paper money that's being inflated with the purchasing power going to zero and buy whatever you can get. And that's what's going to happen. And by the way, a lot I, I know a lot of, not by name, but I know a lot of big deals. When Bitcoin goes up, there's a lot of heavy hitters that sell it and buy gold and move it into Switzerland, uh, the Indonesian or, or the Grand Cayman or basically offshore banks. It's critical that people understand this. Once the metals go up, the control mechanism breaks. As the control mechanism breaks, you go into a fair market, a free market, not a flea market, a free market of true price discovery. I know Cliff High, WebBot fame, is saying that, you know, silver can go to $600 an ounce, but it's not going to matter because you're going to be bartering for the very basic necessities of life. Well, they'll throw their gold and silver into the streets. That has to be the most overused answer for people that know better, but they want to use that to satisfy their biblical laziness. And by the way, the parable of the Ten Talents, that's talking about metals. It's not talking about whether you sing in church, whether you basically do good works. Those, those are, that's, that's a totally different category. But many people will trust a broker and a dealer and one of my famous friends, unless they've got a track record, I know some friends or personal friends of mine, they got a good track record. But if you're playing in a fixed arena or some, I don't play poker, I laugh or I go, boy, those are a bunch of good cards. I, you know, I give myself away. But the point is, is that some people, they take their money that God's given them. They've worked all these years to think they can retire I don't know anybody that uses that word anymore unless they're really wealthy because every dollar you have, Doug Hagman, every dollar I have and all of our listeners, okay, it's not just about us, all of our listeners, the dollar, what was 1932, it's worth what, five cents? It's worth nothing now. The only reason the dollar is worth something is because we can still trade it for goods. The rest of the world is demanding gold. Even, even Russia and China, Russia won't take Chinese yuan or the renminbi, two names for the same currency. They want gold. China doesn't want to part for their gold. Gee, is that why their jet fighters are flying, uh, literally falling out of the air as they try and interfere with Taiwan's airspace or what Taiwan calls whatever, their line of control or whatever? Their engines literally are blowing up because they do not. They, they, they are ingenious. They're a historically creative people, but they don't know how to build good jet engines. 
you're not hearing any of the stuff that's really going on, ladies and gentlemen, because we're not allowed to know. The MSM, this, and, and you know, people used to say, Steve, isn't that being a little harsh? Mainstream murderers, in my opinion. You may not know this, but Biden gave a pass to all the Antifa and BLM people. Basically, he gave them a presidential pardon. Yet there are people that are still in jail that went to Washington that did nothing. And so, Doug, here's what I want to get across to people. It's not too late to prepare as long as something's on the shelf. But when there's nothing on the shelf, what makes anybody think those shelves will get restocked? One of my experts overseas, by the way, I know a lot of guys overseas that are, they had to leave because they were threatened to be murdered, okay? Or as one of my friends, you know, 10 different times. He's been in the hospital 90 days. 90 days, you know, and his attitude's better than mine, which, by the way, I'm confessing to the Lord. You know, here's the thing. This is something, too, I think everybody's got to understand. When we have put our lives on the line, and that's not a euphemism, that's not a metaphor. When I did Alex Jones's show the other day, I could have, uh, I could have basically I think I heard him correctly. Now, sometimes I don't hear correctly, so I stand to be corrected. But Alex said he knows the FBI is coming for him. And he, I think he said, Doug, you watched it. Didn't he mention being murdered? I, I, I just remember. Yes. The, the, um, yes. N- not exactly in that. Con- uh, yeah. Yes, but yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, it would be safe to say being taken off the air and being taken out or being taken out and taken off the air. And we, we as, um, we are all Alex Jones and absolutely, you know, people have to understand this, uh, in my view anyway, that, uh, Hey, we, we saw when he was deplatformed off of, you know, Twitter and Facebook and such. Okay. Few people said much. Well, that's Alex Jones. Okay. And then he was taken, I mean, completely deplatformed or depersoned. And I, I can say this, it's kind of like an eraser where they erase you completely, you erase your existence. And that's what, what's happening to him. And now it's, it's kind of flipped as opposed to just simply erasing him. It goes back to the uh, program name, segregate, isolate, and destroy. Okay, so you can segregate someone, and they've done that with him. You can isolate that. They've done that with him, um, and they're doing that to all of us. But the next step, destruction, yeah, you know, if if, if you can't be reformed, if, if you're such a um, risk to the globalist agenda that you can't be reformed, they're going to destroy you. And by destroy, that means kill. And uh, it, yeah. it pains me. You know, it pains me, Steve, what you and I have gone through without getting into de- details, to to really push that point home and to have people, you know, take us to task for what we're seeing today and saying, oh, you're spreading fear, you're spreading porn, you're fear porn, um, you're spreading fake news. You know, Steve, I'm, as I said last night, I mean, I just, uh, well, I'm not going to say it. I, I, it's just, it, it, it's something that to witness but it's something else to experience. And uh, Amen. there it is. Okay, go ahead. Well, I, again, I want to share something, and I will share it. And I want everybody to take this literally to the Lord if you're a Christian. If you're an atheist saying, wait a minute, I was in Washington agnostic, whatever you call yourself. But if you know from the time they initiate the confiscation gun bills or whatever they're going to do, lock, stock, pun intended, barrel, actually lock and the short barrel rifle stock, if they're going to initiate that, then you've got to understand you have a countdown of 30 days to face your end. Doug, I can't get through, and and I've tried. I've tried. I've tried. I've cried. I've wept. It doesn't do anybody any good to wait to come and to die. I mean, it doesn't. 
What salt are you? What light are you waiting for them to come? Look, if you know they're going to kill you, you've got nothing to lose by standing up, speaking up, and basically uh, prepping up. And prepping is including, including personal firearms, firearms training, but we're running out of time. Oh, by the way, we ran out of ammo, except at double the prices. And there are places you can go to Ammo Land, you can go to a uh, gun broker, and you can buy a lot of ammo online, but you're gonna sometimes you're gonna hold your breath and you go, is it that much? Ammo becomes a barter item in itself. The coming to take you away, haha, to the funny farm, uh-uh. They're coming to take you away, oh no, to the slaughter farm. People say, well, I just, I just don't want to let my beautiful mind be troubled with that. I said, well, you can't have a beautiful mind when they cut your head off. <sighs> it was the first person on talk radio. Again, I guess this is my either mea culpa or my, you know, what is it called? My uh, a soliloquy or not a soliloquy, but uh, my parting shots. My parting chance to get information that wasn't accepted 25 years ago, but I was. I was the first guy to talk about guillotines. And then a girl picked it up, uh, you know, and ran with it, and she made up stories. Mine were from the eyewitnesses. So, ladies and gentlemen, if a four-star general who is, you know, if you've been to Branson, I told the story, if multiple spy spies have told the story, if people with majestic clearance, and don't tell me it doesn't exist, cosmic clearance, if people who have been on the docks when the guillotines crashed open in the, in the uh, uh, crates, interesting enough, coming in from China, if all those things are in play, then don't tell me I'm trying to scare anyone. When the Democrats pulled out the, pulled out the guillotines, you know what they're saying? Viva la revolution. They're, they're telling you, they're giving you imagery of the French Revolution. When I say we're undergoing a full-scale communist revolution, that's not, that's not uh, meant to be watered-down mucous membrane information. Do you, or I want to ask everybody this. What's your line in the sand? Not what's in your wallet. My answer to that commercial is not much anymore, at least in purchasing power. What's in your wallet? Not much. What's in your pantry? I told everybody, go on pantry patrol. Pantry patrol defines, so no one gets the wrong idea, is you go to your pantry, or, or call it your shelves of food, or your staples, whatever you want to call it. Make a list. And then make a list of what you would eat in that, because a lot of people end up with a lot of stuff. Well, if you like pizzas, you got pizza sauce and black olives or whatever you got. And then I want you to go to your freezer. How many people in Texas lost what was in their fridges, lost what was in their freezers, lost heat, lost hope? Where is our hope? Where is our hope? So I'm asking the Lord to, to speak to you. Well, I don't know if it's okay to defend myself. Can I shoot them in the leg? I said, no, they're going for your head. I, I, I mean, be blunt. I've never threatened anybody on talk radio. I've never told everybody or anybody to go to the Capitol. I said, don't go to the Capitol. All that stuff I've said, don't. Listen, I, I, there's a category in certain data banks. Someone who had access to mine said, Steve, from the time you were a wild man, listen to this. From a time I was in eighth grade, and I forget what I did then, you know, but all that stuff's in your file. He said, it's all on so many computer tapes, you know, or computer storage medium, that you can't say what's in your file. It's what's in on your record. Every talk show host, Doug, I think you and I have talked about this, every show we've ever done, it's in the files. Yep. It's infinite data. Any <laughs> Facebook posting, you guys, and by the way, I want you to start thinking, all of you Facebookers, okay, Facebookers that you have been traced by your face, every picture you take goes into their GPS coordinate, 
please, if you're going in the woods to have a retreat or any place, take your heliphone and and put it in a, a mylar bag or some of these pouches, you know, and don't take them.